American culture is now normalizing the idea that minors can be given hormones to prevent their biological development of their secondary sexual characteristics. Dr. Levine, you have supported both allowing minors to be given hormone blockers to prevent them from going through puberty, as well as surgical destruction of a minor's genitalia. Like surgical mutilation, hormonal interruption of puberty can permanently alter and prevent secondary sexual characteristics. The American College of Pediatricians reports that 80 to 95% of prepubertal children with gender dysphoria will exper experience resolution by late adolescence if not exposed to medical intervention and social affirmation. Dr. Levine, do you believe that minors are capable of making such a life-changing decision as changing one's sex? Well, Senator, thank you for your interest in this question. Um, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field um, with robust research and uh, standards of care that have been developed. And if I am fortunate enough to be confirmed as the Assistant Secretary of Health, I will look forward to working with you and your office and coming to your office and discussing the particulars of the standards of care for transgender yeah, medicine. The specific question was about minors. Let's be a little more specific since you evaded the question. Do you support the government intervening to override the parent's consent to give a child puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and or amputation surgery of breasts and genitalia? You have said that you're willing to accelerate the protocols for street kids. I'm alarmed that poor kids with no parents who are homeless and distraught you would just go through this and allow that to happen to a minor. I would hope that you would have compassion for Kira Bell, who's a 23-year-old girl who was confused with her identity. At 14, she read on the internet about something about transsexuals. She thought, well, maybe that's what I am. She ended up getting these puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones. She had her breast amputated. But here's what ultimately she says now. And this is a very insightful from decision from someone who made a mistake but was led to believe this was a good thing by the medical community. I made a brash decision as a teenager, as a lot of teenagers do, trying to find confidence and happiness, except now the rest of my life will be negatively affected, she said, adding that the medicalized gender transitioning was a very temporary, superficial fix for a very complex identity issue. What I'm alarmed at is that you're not willing to say absolutely minors shouldn't be making decisions to amputate their breast or to amputate their genitalia. For most of our history, we believe that minors don't have full rights and the parents need to be involved. So I'm alarmed that you won't say with certainty that minors should not have the ability to make the decision to take hormones that will affect them for the rest of their life. Will you make a more firm decision on whether or not minors should be involved in these decisions? Senator, uh, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field. Uh, and if confirmed to the position of Assistant Secretary of Health, I would certainly be pleased to come to your office and talk with you and your staff about the standards of care and the complexity of this field. Let it go into the record that the witness refused to answer the question. Uh, before I uh, uh, turn it over to Senator Murphy, I do want to say, Dr. Levine, I wanted to say I appreciated your thoughtful and medically informed response to Senator Paul's questions earlier in the hearing. It is really critical to me that our nominees be treated with respect and that our questions focus on their qualifications and the work ahead of us rather than on ideological and harmful misrepresentations like those we heard from Senator Paul earlier. And I will focus on that uh, as chair of this committee. Uh, so thank you again for your response. 